Jesus Will from Will Development. This is my 257th weekly update. Now, I spoke last week about doing a deload this week, and that did, in fact, become the plan. And I'm very happy that I did because I feel a lot more rested and my body feels a lot better than it did last week. Last week, it just everything from head to toe just felt kind of sore and a little achy. The joints weren't necessarily in pain, but everything was just very, like, we need just a little bit of a break, you know? So that's the beauty of doing a deload is that you can take the time off that you need, but you still go through some motions and you possibly get some things done that you wouldn't normally get done. Now, speaking in super, super generalized terms, most people will go one of two ways to deload. They'll either reduce the amount of volume they're doing or they'll reduce the intensity they're doing, or sometimes they'll do both. These are super generalized ideas uh, in terms of ways to deload from your current program, for instance. I'm in no way advocating either one. You're just going to have to try either way, or, you know, there's, there's tons of ways people deload. Some people just do completely uh, different specificities and, and modalities when they decide to deload. You're going to have to figure out your own way. I'm not going to really get into any sort of a debate or sort of give any information on that uh, just because I don't feel like I could give good enough information on it. If I'm being just totally honest, I don't feel like I could explain it well enough either because I don't totally understand it myself, maybe? No, because I just don't feel like giving anybody information out there on that sort of thing. You're just going to have to try it yourself. But for me, this week I decided to tone down both intensity and volume. And on some of the days, for instance, yesterday, uh, I had to take, some, take my girl to the airport today, so I wasn't able to go to the gym tonight, so I went Thursday instead of Friday, being today, so yesterday, duh. This is why my videos are long, because I ramble about stupid bullshit and over-explain things. I'll work on that. Anyway, for instance, on Thursday, normally I do my frame deadlift variant. I, we, you know, I use a hex bar at the gym because it's what we've got, but at the comp it's going to be a frame deadlift and, you know, 18-inch pick. Normally I do that, uh, but for... The deload yesterday, I, I sort of went in there with a mild plan. I was thinking about grabbing that and, and doing a little bit of work with it, but I decided just completely against it because everything was feeling pretty good this week in terms of my back and my hip, and I said, why why push it, you know, give it the actual break it needs while still doing things that are going to facilitate the strengthening and rehabilitation of these pains that I have. So I did lots of hamstring work, uh, some with heavier weights, some with just a lot of volume, Density and volume, right? Some uh, tons of back work as well, but you know, uh, a lot of mid back work, right? Not not too much uh, upper back work in terms of you know like uh, rear delts and things like that. It was just a lot of low rowing, basically. I did, and I did some stuff I hadn't done in a while, like actually, uh, you know, cable low rowing with the the narrow grip handles, and then I did some. Pendlay rows, which I haven't done in a very long time, Pro probably about six months I haven't done any pendlay rows. And it's something I really should get back into doing. They're a great accessory movement for, like, everything. But, you know, because having a big back means you'll be good at everything. But to go back to Monday, which is normally the day I run yoke and, you know, work on squats, I did do a lot of leg work that day. Most of it was a lot of volume, not a lot of intensity. Did a bit of a burnout sort of after I'd done on the, not hack squat, but the other version, leg press. Which, you know, normally I wouldn't really touch a leg press for like actual work work. I like to use it for like a burnout sort of thing, but it was there. Everybody else was jumping on it, and I said, yeah, I'll jump into what the hell, you know, it, it, it won't hurt my back, so I'll jump in there and do it. And, and you know, obviously it didn't. And then did some Zercher squats, which I haven't done in a while, but uh, was able to sort of figure them out pretty quickly this, this go-around. It only took me to the second set before I finally figured out where to put my feet so it didn't hurt my hips and actually felt like it was uh, strengthening my ability versus hurting me. And then Tuesday, which was press day, uh, still did some push press work, but it was uh, it was lighter weight. I think I was down in the 140s, and I was just on a 
a regular gym bar, just a regular 45. Actually, I think that bar weighs 49 pounds. That's I think that's our heavy bar. So I was actually probably doing like 45, 145 instead of 140 like I wanted to, but that's okay. It, it wasn't heavy or anything. And decided to throw in some conditioning at the end there. Uh, I kind of wanted to play with the log just because the neutral, I knew the neutral grip wouldn't do anything to my shoulders in terms of pain. And uh, I really like doing log clean and press as a burnout. Um, you know, if you want to get kind of, I, I hate the CrossFit as like, just champion this as if they've invented it, but you know, just doing like an every minute on the minute with log clean and press. I mean, just five rounds is enough for you to want to die, but it's also going to get you a really good pump in the shoulders, and it's going to get some conditioning work in there that you probably need. And I prefer doing conditioning with actual implements. That's sort of the beauty of Strongman, where you can get work in with a particular implement. Maybe you don't touch as much as you, you probably should, which for me, it's definitely the log. I don't touch it nearly as much as I should, but it's a good variation on overhead pressing movements and... Specifically, the clean and then the press is going to be very, uh, very taxing in terms of uh, cardio, cardiovascular demand. So if you can get used to doing, say, sets of 10 or 15 or 12, you know, with any given weight, cleaning and pressing, if you go to a comp and they only have clean and then press away, you're going to be fucking golden. But if they have clean and press every rep, then you're used to that. You know, you're used to doing that movement over and over and over and over, and that pattern's been ingrained. That's where a lot of debate gets in, I see, where people sort of go back and forth on which is better doing, you know, lower reps with slightly higher weight in terms of form breakdown versus, you know, lower weight and higher reps. Uh, you know, the question is, you know, how much form breakdown are we getting? What's, what's better for what? I'm speaking specifically about accessory movements and or using specifically the log as a burnout, I think using a weight where you can get 10 to 15 reps, whatever you get that first round though, stick with that. So for me, I was able, I, I honestly, I could have gotten 15, but I just stopped at 12 because I knew what was coming. And I also hadn't finished up my pressing on the straight bar yet. So I was like, I don't want to kill myself on this to just go back there and do that. You know, I'll be super warm, but I'll also be a little bit weaker. And it is supposed to be a deload, and I didn't want to drop any lower than 140, 145, whatever was on that bar. And so I just went to 12, and I mean, you know, by by the fifth round, it was just like, I'm, I want to die. But, you know, it feels good when it's over, and uh, once you get past round three, it's not that bad. It's like, oh, I've only got two left, you know. So, just something to think about. And, and the reason that kind of popped in my mind is because I had a stone pickup this weekend, and a Masters competitor, really nice guy, great great local Masters competitor, um, just an all-around good strong man and, and good guy, too. And I love chatting with him, but, you know, we were actually talking and just a little bit about training here and there, and I brought up that I like to do the log clean and press as, you know, a finisher, and he was like, he said the same exact thing, you know, he said, oh, yeah, me too, he's like, I love it, you know, he's like, well, you know, love it, but hate it. And uh, he said, it's a great way to do conditioning because, you know, I don't actually have to run or move. I just stand there and do a static event, but it's killing me, but making me better. So, something to think about for uh, your not pro pro tip for the week. Week spelled W-E-A-K, by the way. I know, right? Other than that, I was also on a podcast on Sunday with the nerd of strength, Kai herself, up in New York. Her and I had a Skype call where we talked about, well, honestly, we spent the first good portion of it just chatting about <clears throat> my stone-making career, and then we uh, dove into some other topics, like um, how we feel about the current state of Strongman, both on the local and the um, sort of national, and then even international, and, you know, just global scale in general. And things we would change, things we like, things we don't like, all that good stuff. So I will put a link to, to her channel down below. She is also amazing. She does Last Week in Strongman, or Last Week Strongman LWS, I believe, yeah. And it's, it's just, if you ever just wanted a 
video every week that just talked about the news of Strongman. No opinions, no, you know, predictions, no mispronouncing of names. Uh, she does mispronounce a name or two here or there. To be fair, some of those European names are a little crazy to try to pronounce. I mean, they've got, like, no vowels in them, some of them. So, you know, I'll, I'll cut a little slack where I can. But my point is, she goes so in-depth on the news, and they're usually only about 10 to 12 minute videos, and you get literally all the strongman news you could possibly want from international competition, professional level, and then, you know, she even talks about things like who's getting married and stuff like that, you know. But it's none of the gossipy bullshit, like, you know, this guy's cheating on his wife, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's always just, this is legitimate news that you may want to know about, and she's not chasing clout with it. She's legitimately just doing it because she loves the sport. And I implore you to go support her. Like I said, I will put the link in the description below to her channel. And if you don't go check it out, then what's your excuse? Mm -hmm.